Welcome back to Online Darts, everyone. We're here at Butlins Minehead. And, mates, it's been a while since we've caught up, so we'll, um, we'll jump straight into it. First of all, the tournament. Probably not the semi-final many were expecting. No, certainly not. There's always a few shocks and surprises, but to have sort of lost so many of the big names relatively early on, um, it makes it exciting. We're going to get a new winner, and we may end up getting a, a first-time major winner, but... Uh, the favourites, Luke Humphreys and, and rightly so. Look, looking at it, obviously, as recording this, in, we're in between... Uh, <laughs> well, literally, <laughs> in between sessions. Sessions. If Luke doesn't win it from here, he'll walk away very disappointed, won't he? Yeah, I would have thought so. And that, that's no disrespect, but he, he's the he's the proven winner in the field. I mean, obviously, can't ignore Dimitri, but is Dimitri in the kind of form that that will give any kind of fear to, to Luke Humphreys? Not really. The, the one name in there he's got to be wary of um, is Damon Etta. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was absolutely remarkable today. And I think what a lot of people are missing, cer certainly my point, is he had to play that well just to beat Luke Littler. And that says more about Luke Littler than anything else. He had to produce darts from the gods uh, at times. And um, I, was, I wasn't I was convinced he was going to win until the double went in, to be honest. Yeah, but... Uh, credit to both lads, and, it, and it's great. Listen, you know I've been banning, banging the drum for Damon Etta for the last couple of years, and it, it's great to see him go up there and produce starts of, of the quality I know that he has in the locker. We've seen him do it on the Pro Tour and the Euro Tour. We've seen those numbers, but now he's actually done that on a big stage. Will that feel as if he's now ticked another box on his journey? It should do, yeah. Listen, he, he's going he's gonna to approach the semi-finals tonight with a, a bit of trepidation. It's, you know... It, Semi-finals are the hardest ones to win. You know, you're you're one game away from from potentially winning it, but you're it feels like a million miles away. Um, but he, sh he should take a, a massive lift uh, and take massive confidence from that performance because he did it against someone matching him dart for dart. It was it, it was just incredible. One of the best games of darts I've ever seen. Look, Luke Littler continues to excite the darting. Well, and again, look, although he's lost in an unbelievable game, the levels the boy is producing is just remarkable. Every time we think he can't do it again or we ask mm -hmm. him a question, he bats it back us with not the answers, but you go, I have these questions, boys. Yeah, you keep hearing this the, the, a, a sort of statement I, I read a lot or, or I hear a lot is, oh, yeah, but wait till someone, you know, really puts it on him. Well, Hetta did, and he was double ten away from taking a deciding leg. Um, yeah, he just answers all the questions, and he's he's not even the finished article. You know, that's that may arrive in the next two, three, four, five years, but right now he's the he's the hottest property in our sport and um, deserves all the plaudits. Not necessarily, you know. Again, there was sort of because he went and put his darts away, and he allowed Damon Hetter to have his moment. People were like, "Oh, bad loser!" What, what, I don't want to see a guy smile and. Uh, and when he's lost, I want to see him disappointed because that tells me he's he's driven to win. Oh, he's arrogant. No, he believes in his own ability. Another great quality. The most arrogant man I ever, I ever met in my life. One of my best friends was Eric Bristo, but he's now loved, of course. On Luke, obviously you've seen Eric and Phil up close, but does Luke have the potential to go on and be the greatest? I'm not saying he will, but does he have the potential right now to go and eclipse anything we've ever seen? Yeah, he's, he's, he, is, he is up there with one of the best players I've ever seen right now. And he's, uh, I, I said to him in commentary the other day that he reminds me so much of, of Ronnie O'Sullivan. He, he's very much a maverick and he, he, sees, he sees the game through different eyes. It, the way he's, he approaches the mathematical side of the game. And yeah, he's, he's very special. He, for me, the... The comparisons with Ronnie O'Sullivan, especially when Ronnie O'Sullivan was 17, it, it's frighteningly close. And, you know, I, I know Ronnie quite well. I've had many opportunities to to have a chat with him. And they are, they are very, very similar, especially especially mentally or their mentality towards their chosen sport. Uh, MVG here at the UK, it looks as if he a uh, reoccurrence of, of a shoulder issue that we all saw him and everyone was like, oh, he's only dead with losing. But he was stretching it out from moment one, even when he was in front at that second break, never looked comfortable. Is, is that a concern that it looks as if something's gone again? Especially with his schedule. Um, it's literally full on and 
I hope it was just something like a trap nerve or because if it's a muscle tear, of course, the only way they repair is when they're given rest and he's got no chance to rest. So, yeah, it is, it is a real worry. Uh, I think he, I, I don't know, I haven't been told any, anything regarding it, but if he could have a rest, rest up this week, miss a Premier League night, you know, it's not, not ideal, but he's in such a strong position in the Premier League anyway. He can afford to take a break. But I, I spoke to his manager afterwards and I said, the problem they got is going in and out of the cold all the time. And it, and it could be just a case it was a, well, I'm hoping it may have been just like a cramp or, or something like that. But um, yeah, he was desperately disappointed afterwards because he's he come into this UK in such fine form. Yeah, well, look, he's dominating the, the, the Premier League. And again, it's kind of worrying for the Premier League format that it's happened again, that MVG's won three on a spin, already told the world, I'm at finals night and mm. with no bonus for topping the table, which he was always driven by before, that's not there. Is yeah. there a worry that he now switches off for the Premier League? Yeah, I think he I, I think he could do. He he's he is that kind of player that needs stimulating all the time. He needs he needs goals and he's still got so much ambition and you know, just when you think maybe is he starting to slow down a little bit before he's done in the Premier League and uh, and elsewhere, of course, in the in the World Series, he's listen. He, he's still right up there with one of the most feared players. But um, uh, again, he, he started so young. You know, his his career is nowhere near over. Obviously, he could play for another 10, 15 years, but. You think of him, he's played more darts than someone would play him for 50 years because he's so successful and he's always going deep in tournaments. He's won so many tournaments that maybe maybe the, the, the area of his body is just beginning to get a little bit too much wear and tear. You know. I look at MBG, I look at him chasing Phil. Oh, sorry, to start with, it was getting to Barney. Yeah. Then he was chasing Phil. Then he had the rivalry with a Gary that really sparked him. Has this little rivalry of Luke Littler reignited that fire? Because for so long, there was no rivalry for him. He was doing whatever he wanted. Where now, he loves to be the centre of attention and people are talking about other people now. Has that sparked the fire, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think all the chat now is about the two Lukes, isn't it? Um, and uh, we know him well and he does like to be the centre of attention. He loves loves being world number one. He loves being world champion, um, and he hasn't got he hasn't got any of that right now. And yeah, maybe that was the, the little kick up the backside he, he needed. He, need, he, need, he needs a rivalry. You know, the rivalry had with Taylor was was remarkable, um, and it, and it's funny. It's almost it's almost a little bit like he when he was the Luke Littler and Taylor was the Michael Van Gerwen. Yeah. Um, and that drove Phil on, didn't it? Yeah. You know, that, that kept Phil probably going for another five, six, seven years that he may have gone, you know, I've had enough now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be fascinating. The next three or four years, I just hope that whatever is wrong with Michael, it, it's healed quickly or, or it's, it's sort of cured itself. Yeah, we've seen him enjoy those Premier League wins over Luke, where normally they'd just be a Premier League win, but he's still like, just a little reminder, son, yes, you're good, but... I'm, yeah, still, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still the governor around here. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's fascinating. I, I, I'm loving it. I know, I don't know. You know, I always watch the opening night, and I'll just sort of, you dip know, in and out of dip in and out of it. But I've been absolutely captivated by it because of that very reason of the fact that you've got a new world champion, a new world number one, a new superstar in Littler, and then you know the old guard in Peter Wright and, and MVG. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's it's been it's been a good campaign so far. Going back to Luke, obviously that the media attention is is through the roof and not normal darts media. But at the moment, are they almost doing more harm than good with some of the stories they're writing and not understanding the sport, like calling Radek Sadansky an unranked Polish bus driver when he beat him and, and and things like that. And the darts fans don't forget that, do they? Because that you can't can't bull, bullshit a bullshit or something. No, and no, people absolutely. know and they're like, hang on a minute, this is this is ridiculous reporting of yes, we it's eyes on the darts, but not necessary for the right reasons. Yeah, well, real journalism is is a lost art, isn't it? It's been been replaced with, you know, stupid things like that. That that are just it's just a lack of care, a lack lack of research, and a lack of understanding for our game. And we're quite we're quite precious about our little sport, and we've never had so many eyes on it. But um, if I was looking after Luke, uh, 
I wouldn't have him on social media. I know he's making a ton of money out of it or whatever, but I'd have someone do I'd have you doing it. I know you look after loads of players' social medias, and I just think to say, yeah, and I wouldn't read it. You know, he's it's the, it, the 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 ability to respond to idiots, which the vast majority are on there, who spout absolute bullshit. Um, it's too much for him, and he and he gets involved, and you just can't, you know, not in his position, in it. And it and li listen, you'll you'll have 99 positive things, and then you'll have one absolute twat say something that might trigger you or might be a little bit too close to the bone, and then you, you, you'll get you'll get just too involved in that, you know. you in the end, it would just dominate what he's thinking about what are people still worry about what people are saying about you. it doesn't matter the fact that they're talking about you it is great anyway just get up there do what you do earn a chunk of money and sail off into the sunset a couple of the premier league boys there are there are question marks at the moment peter wright there don't take me there but... <laughs> look, look there, there are question marks about his selection and although recently performances are getting better absolutely still pointless in the Premier League and he's now a whole a more than a night's win behind catching yeah. the, the next person are you concerned that yes the form is going the right way but the Premier League again could still do more harm than good to Peter Wright yeah possibly listen you know we had that thing down at the Masters and he himself said he was surprised to be picked he did a, an article yeah. where he said me and Joe didn't think we were in so yeah. why why he was so prickly about the fact that I said Look, he will be in. We did our thing down at the world. Yeah. I said he will be in, but personally, yeah. I'd like to have seen Dobie in his place to give him another go. Um, but more importantly than any of that nonsense is the fact that the Peter Wright game looks to be on its way back. He's starting to produce some really good numbers, two good runs on the Pro Tour, played OK here, just walked into a, a, a savage bunting, didn't he? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think he, he seems to be sticking to a the same or similar it's a certain, straight barrel is the yeah, important. it's a straight barrel nothing nothing fancy nothing gimmicky uh, and he looks to be on the road back um, and, and all, all credit to him listen you know he was he's in my top 10 of all time I, yeah. I rate him massively I don't have any personal I've never had a crossword with Peter over the years there's no personal agenda for me but yeah. um, I'm paid to give my thoughts on darts and that that was just my my thought uh, Michael Smith won the first night in Cardiff but since, again, we've seen an erratic bully boy that it's almost as if he can't put two good performances t together. What, what do you put that down to? Is it just confidence or is it something more... I know he won't say it, but the equipment still doesn't look right to, to me. No, I know you I'd, look at throws and stuff like that. Yeah, I, the, the throw looks fine. The darts just don't... Con the, the old darts would consistently enter the board on the same angle um, and sort of follow the, a similar trajectory. but. Uh, he's, listen, I, I've spoken to him, I said, mate, the darts are fine. I love them. Um, so for me, it's just a confidence thing. I don't think it's a technique thing. Um, yeah, it's hard to put your finger on it, but we know, Phil, this game's all about belief, you know, and it's, once you can play this sport, it's literally all between the ears. And if, if you doubt yourself or there's an element of hope rather than this is going in the, the target, then that, the only way you can get around that is by consistently winning. And the problem you have now, there's so many great players in the sport, consistently winning looks unlikely for, for anybody. Um, you know, Luke Humphreys, who was absolutely outstanding and, and did something I don't think we'll, we'll see again for a long time in winning all of those events. It, it, in, this, in this sphere and the environment now, Winning multiple tournaments just looks unlikely for anyone. Uh, Gary Anderson, the renaissance continues. And before everyone says it about, our oh, ITV have picked the boards, obviously ITV don't, we, we know this. Yeah. But were you surprised? If, that I, if, I, if I picked the games, the, the stage games would have been a lot different. But no, we have no control but, in any event that we do. But were you surprised that the form he is in, the yes. fans' favourites he's in, that he was only on the main stage once and he opened it when it was the quietest it's been in here. Did that take you by yeah, surprise a little bit? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it's done by the tournament director and, and Matt Porter, I think. And uh, listen, it's not an easy decision because they got an understanding of they've got they've got to put certain players. You know, you get the you get the moan, or oh, it's always the same players, you know, 
So then when it's not, what can, you know, what can they do? And they, they had to have, I, I'm trying to think which session it was. Um, but L L L last, Littler, last had, yeah, Littler had to play. Humphreys. Humphreys had to play, he's world champion. Anyway. Fun. Uh, Bunting right. I think the, the surprise one was Dimitri. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that was the one I, I certainly wouldn't have had up there myself. Um, not for the not for the opportunity to get Gary on there. And and, and would would Lukeman have done what he did against Gary on the main stage? You don't know, yeah. You I've, know I've, I've, I've got an idea, but yeah. you don't know. Uh, and listen, Gary wouldn't have liked being out there, but he was fabulous in defeat and Lukeman was was yeah. fabulous in that. that. That's one of the best displays of finishing I've ever seen. But the numbers Gary's posted this year is, again, looking slightly ominous for everyone else, that he did it last year, everyone was like, oh, let's see how long it lasts. He started this year with Venom yeah. uh, again. And I was looking at the rankings, everyone else is defending above him, he's not. So shortly, he's going to rock it. Yeah, those, those rankings are, um, yeah, they're not as... They're, not well, true. They're, yeah, they're not a true reflection of, of where he is right now. And I, listen, I think he wins a, I think he wins a biggie this year. It wouldn't surprise me if by the time we get round to the match play, he's bang on peak form. Um, yeah, and, and listen, a lot of the other players involved in, in the Premier League, the, the real big guns of the game, that's going to take its toll on them. So he might be just timing it up perfectly, uh, you know, in one of the big events coming, well, they come thick and fast, don't they now, that he, he might nick one, maybe a maybe a World Series or, or something like that. He, he's, listen, you can't keep punching those numbers and, and not pick up titles. No, I can completely agree. It's just insanity no, what he's posting. Uh, PDC announced another change to the Euro Tour uh, rankings. I know we spoke about the original one and, and weren't keen, and it was like, what have they done here? They've made an amendment. They've listened to the players, that the, the PDPA. Are you pleased that they've made that, look, that change? Look, I still don't like the fact that the top 16 in the world are in, but hey, yeah, this, this I, is better. I, listen, I, they got to have the top 16 in the world in because... That's the brand. Um, oh, look, I get it. Uh, and especially when you're exploring new territories, new broadcasters, um, it would be it would be insane not to guarantee the fans the opportunity. Listen, it's it, it's a big Premier League, isn't it? Really, it, it, it's guaranteeing that the, the the fans and the viewers get to see their favourite players. And listen, the, the, everyone else has got a chance to qualify. I know it's less numbers, but. You know, back in my day, it was one or two. Yeah. You know, you only had like one qualifying place for, for some tournaments. Um, yeah, they, 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 I can understand the players' gripes, um, but it isn't coming from those outside or inside the top 16, is it? So, um, yeah, it's one of those. It, again, uh, Matt Poor is in an impossible position to keep everybody happy, and he has to also look at this commercially. Listen, we've seen this promotion of our sport done terribly wrong and um, we've seen the results in that um, what they continue to do um, and continue to go forward prize money's up again all over the place um, yeah I just I, I sort of get why some players are disappointed because they've had a few opportunities taken away but ultimately if you're good enough you'll qualify yeah because the, the, before they made the change it would have made the top 16 a very protected club with the way the money would have been done where th this change at least it, it it's not I suppose that's the yeah thing. but there's there's no there's no tournament outside of the Premier League which isn't ranked anyway where it's just the top 16 is it uh, you know you've got your your, your pro tour order of merit yeah, yeah. your players championship order of merit um, and again if you're up in that you're in the tournament you know this is you know the Euro tour does carry some some big prize money and, and and again we hear a lot of complaints that players aren't guaranteed money well they are now aren't they um but yeah I, I think it's i think it's one of those things you can you can strive for a solution for some problems but i think some people look for problems to try and find an unknown solution if you know what i mean it's just one of those on prize money as we're here at the uk Open, would you like to see prize money for first round here because those Riley's qualifiers and whatever have spent a lot of money to qualify yeah. and then a lot of money for the weekend and not guaranteed anything for, for being here. Was that the next step to make sure that round one gets some? I'm not saying it yeah, has to be a lot, but just No, I think, I think they should certainly get enough to cover 
their expenses. Remember, they've gone to that Riley Day. Some may have travelled miles and miles and miles, stayed in a hotel, and then they've got the cost of coming here. You know, and it, it couldn't be any further away from anything else, uh, even if it was 250 or 300 quid. Um, and uh, you know, the the I, I'm the same on the Pro Tour. I think first round losers should get 500 quid because um, it's not an open tournament. You've won your card. You, 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 you've won your place there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and there should be something just to cover the expenses for those players that are brand new, don't have sponsors, that were trying to juggle work in and everything else. You're not getting the best out of them either with that pressure of, oh, what do I do this weekend? Pay my mortgage or go to Pro Tour. And then, of course, the Pro Tours that are abroad as well, even more cost. Um, and it's not like they don't have enough money because they're making bundles. Correct, they are. Uh, yourself, we saw you back in action at the at the Circus Tavern. Have you had time to, to dissect it, it there? Because yeah. all, all in all, there, there was some good stuff from you. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just disappointing, Phil, because I know... Well, when I, when I did the Super Series, <laughs> I practised for about five or six weeks for that, uh, and it showed. You know, I was punching in some really big numbers. A um, couple of hundred averages and some real solid 95s, 96s. So I, st I still know I can play. My, my problem now, I just cannot get the time to, to put the practice in. And then I play in it and I get all disappointed because I didn't play, I didn't meet my expectations, but fail to prepare, prepare to fail. But it, listen, I love the tournament. I love playing in it. I'm always grateful to the two Jasons who, uh, who, who invite me. Uh, and give me a chance to get out there. And it's, it's great to see fans that I've not, who were sort of my fans back in the day, all two of them. Um, but yeah, great tournament. And uh, listen, I, I don't think Henderson, and he'll be the first to admit, played to the best of his ability, nowhere near, but he's, he was just still a bit too good for everybody else. And um, that's going to make him even tougher to beat in the ones going forward. But yeah, all in all, a quarter final, a couple of decent games. Played OK in spells against Darrell. Played OK again in spells against um, the German fella. But against Lisa, started missing doubles. Um, we've seen it here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's off catching of, off, one of, off of top, you know, yeah. top pro players that once you start missing doubles, it's so hard to get out of your head. and. Yeah, and I just couldn't shift it, but that doesn't take anything away from Lisa. I thought she was, she was fabulous and, and took her chances. And, and another great tournament, and that's gone up in prize money next year. So, so maybe I will start practicing. I did. My plan was this year. We spoke about yeah. I was going to really, really get back on the board three, four hours a day and and try and play in all the events. But I've started doing more work now for for the PDC, which again, absolutely love it and really grateful um, to, to to get a chance to to work on more World Series events, go to different countries, working on Euro Tours, with, you know, I love Euro Tours, so, um, and then with the pub and then doing motors yeah. and doing ITV and doing the radio, it's just, I just need a, I need eight days a week and maybe I'm 30 hours in a day, yeah, you know that more <laughs> than me. Uh, it's really interesting that you've gone back into playing, I know it's not the full time, but I remember when we got you up to London back in the day and you went into to, to everything, there was no stone unturned and it really hit a chord with me what you went through. How hard was the decision to put yourself back in to that environment that almost killed you? Let, yeah. Let's be fair, it drove well, yeah. you to, to insanity. How yeah. difficult was that decision to put yourself back into that environment? Um, a, a tough one, but I, I sort of, I, I didn't sort of just sort of go, right, selfishly, this is what I'm going to do. I sat down with Charlotte and we, I sort of said, well, well, what do you think? Um, and she obviously, what you know, watched me and supported me when I played down down at the Super Series, and that was the real, that was the real big one for me. Um, and I, I, I had to think, I had to think long and hard about it because, uh, for one, I didn't want to put myself out there for criticism, which I, I knew I was going to get, which is, which is quite bizarre because most pe most people think I'm a I'm too Bob and never won nothing, was never any good. So why would I worry? You know, why would I worry about putting myself out of there? But you know, I, for, for what I went through and under the circumstances which I played, I, I actually didn't do too bad in the end. And I'm, you know, there's obviously there's things I'm not proud of and things that, that I achieved that I'm really proud of. Um, and I, I just had to, I had to read, you know, the, the phrase of looking at yourself in the mirror, and I had to. And I thought, 
and, and I was I was playing a bit of darts with the lads down in Tivy, and I, I, I was really enjoying the practice and seeing the improvements every week. And and I said I had a chat with Charlotte about it, and she said, "Listen, if you want to play and you're enjoying it, just do it. It don't matter. No, there's no expectation. You know, you're not you're not sort of saying, oh well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do yeah. that. You know, although I knew I was playing well going into the Super Series, I thought of, I, I kept that." mantra of I'm just a commentator, commentator. <laughs> and and that's my that's my comfort blanket because yeah. that that's all I am um, and then and then on the back of the super series and I didn't watch any of it back it was only just prior to playing in the seniors and just sort of seeing the numbers from the seniors tour events and who's doing what where and I was sort of matching my numbers up thinking I could win one of these um, and that was my, you know, my whole idea then of, of right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it one. I'm gonna give it a year where I'm 100 percent committed. We bought the pub. Um, more work's come in, and I, I, I just had to. I, I have to make a decision, and what time I do have, I want to spend it with Charlotte at the pub, and um, and obviously I'm co committed elsewhere with, with work. But I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going to work hard this year, so I don't have to work hard next year. And maybe next year I'll be able to apply myself a bit more. Because even if it, even if it's not in the first part of the year, I think by the middle of the year I'll be, I'll sort of, I'll, I'll be there or thereabouts, and that will then feed over, and then hopefully I qualify for the worlds. And then when that comes around in the, the sort of late January, February, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on it. Just picking this one back up in my head because we hit the we hit the time in limit on the first record. Um, but g going back to the seniors itself, that we've seen obviously Steve Beaton commit to next year. There's a whole little cluster of players in and around that are in danger of losing their tour card. That's why I have to do it fast. <laughs> the seniors is potentially about to go boom. Yeah, I think I think I think it has the potential. I think the appetite's there for it. I think. A lot of work needs to be done on the production. I, listen, I, I, and I'm not, I'm not going to shit on their parade because I understand, uh, I understand the cost involved, uh, and I understand how difficult it is because I've been working in it for 25 years. Um, but I think when you're trying to rebrand something or reinvent the wheel, you've got to, you've got to do something different in terms of production than than everyone else is doing, and we need, they, they and. And that's going to take a massive influx of cash. Well, a broadcaster wants to see it at its best. And you know, it, listen, what we do at what we do at the Super Series is right up there with anything you'll see here or Sky or, yeah. or anyone else that does any broadcasting. Um, but that's that took massive investment, and I think I think that's what it's going to take from the, from the two Jasons. They're going to they're going to need massive investment to put put something together that's super crisp, slick, modern, um, uh, and really, really sort of rebrand it. And I, and I think a broadcaster would come in for it because there is such a huge appetite for darts right now. Um, but as it stands, I don't think, you know, broadcasters are going to take it because it's cheap. But to, to really get someone involved uh, that wants to take it another step forward, and make it more appealing to those that, as you said, are approaching 50 or at 50, and they think, Do you know what, if I could, if I can go and play in the seniors and, and earn myself a couple of hundred grand a year, I'm off, and I can spend more time on the golf course or fishing or whatever else they want to do, going on holiday. Um, that option's there. They can do more exhibitions, of course. Um, you've got the Super Series. You know, it, 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 being being on the pro or the PDC tour is is no longer the, the be-all and end-all. Just interesting what, what you're saying there, and, and look, I completely get it, but it, it's a tough world at the moment, isn't it? Like you said, the appetite for darts is, is huge, and it, it's trying to match the appetite with products at the moment. Yeah, which is why you've got... Listen, it's it's unlike anything else. It stands alone. It's a seniors' event. Everybody in it is 50 or, or over. You've got so many legends of our, of our sports still alive who, who may not be up to playing anymore or have the appetite to play but you know they should be utilized in some capacity I, I certainly would bring in kids to produce it kids to do the the, um, 
the, the, the in front and the, and the in front of camera. You know, we want to. If you're if you're going to appeal to a broader audience, do something different, freshen it up. There's loads of there's loads of young people out there who would love the opportunity to work on a product like that and put their own spin on it. And I think the the world we live in now, unless you unless you find a, something, you know, your own unique way of doing stuff, listen, all these TikTokers and YouTubers and everything else, they're all making money because they have their own take on things. And I think something like that would, would very much work in the seniors. Misfit darts? Yeah, 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 why not? Why not? No, no, I don't want to have a roll around with John Fury, that's for sure. <laughs> don't fancy taking on KSI on a dartboard? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm up for that, up for that. But look, just, just in general, the darts landscape since the World Championship has tra changed dramatically. You saw the boom back in the day, but is this off the scale yeah. what we're seeing now? Yeah, I never... Listen, when, it, when we only had three channels or then four channels back in the day, darts was massive. Bullseye was pulling in 15 million plus viewers. Now we have got so many different ways and platforms of, uh, of watching uh, material. Uh, I, I never thought, you know, I thought the Fallon factor was something else because that put different eyes on our sport. I have never done so much media. I've never had so many requests for uh, different TV networks from globally for my opinion on this or my thoughts on that. Um, remarkable. And, uh, and again, it, that comes with, with pressure on that young man's shoulders. And I think, I think it's incredible how he deals with it. He's just... He's just water off a duck's back. It is remarkable how he's handling it, and all credit to him. I know the PDC and the PDPA have, have, have made sure there's safeguarding issues, and um, they're, they're doing amazing with him. But even so, for that, for his age, um, the way he deals with it all is is incredible. And, and listen, the, the players have, have, you know, listen, we we sort of put down the foundations that the. the the players built the house and it's almost like Fallon and Luke Littler are just putting the roof on. It's it's amazing. And then blowing it off. The viewing figures from the World Championship were just incredible on a pay-per-view network yeah. as, as well. Is, yeah. on, on, on Sky TV, those numbers yeah. for darts were just like, wow. Yeah, and I, I spoke to the, uh, I spoke to um, my producer here and I said, why on earth isn't today on ITV? Imagine the numbers. What did they say? <laughs> like, like the answer you get when you ask lots of sensible questions that there's no answer for. You know, they're, they're, it is quite bizarre. When, you, when you've got an opportunity to, to do something when... I don't think there's nothing on ITV today, is there? No. Not that can't be moved. No. No, exactly that. Um, and I'm, I'm amazed because usually the the powers that be in things like this are literally red off um because we are going through the the ultimate boom period of our sport luke you know i didn't think there was any chance luke wasn't going to reach the sunday um and you imagine having that game on that platform the power of social media how quick you know those first two three four five legs oh. the eyes on the sport would have been been remarkable but um, there's obviously good reason behind it because if you're head of ITV or head of sport and you know that you're producing a darts program, me, I'd have gone, I don't care what's on. Get it off. Get, yeah, get it off and get the darts on, but who knows, mate? You may I'm know. just a commentator. <laughs> I like that. Uh, you may know, you may not know. Obviously, last year, one of the criticisms of, of ITV's World Series coverage was the lack of live mm. events, the delayed coverage of the day later. Do you know if that's going to change because of this start boom, whether we are going to get more of the World Series live? Well, the um, their online model, um, which I still don't get people that moan about watching things online because... Everything I watch, I got to press a button for. Well, if you haven't got a smart TV, save up and get one because they're they're incredible. Everything YouTube's on there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're they're. Uh, I think that. I, listen, there's been an obvious opportunity to use me and other ITV people on on the World Series, which is produced by Matchroom for ITV. Um, so yeah, their their online platform, I do believe, is showing everything live. Yep. And then there will be 
a package put on ITV4. So um, if you've got a laptop, a telephone, or a smart TV, you won't miss it on. Dial up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, or if you come to the pub, Prince of Wales in Orkeston, it'll be on there. Unbelievable pub as well, by the <laughs> yeah. way. Host of the first Live Lounge Live, which was incredible, it wasn't was it? was incredible. Almost as good as the curry. <laughs> yeah, and um, we are, we're in, we're in negotiations. There, there possibly could be a return at Christmas time. Yes, that's, as, as, that, that'd be a great, I think I think we did it the same and did it pre-Christmas. The, so we, the, the Monday before the World yeah, Championship or something like that. that. It went down so well. You have got another one in Darling? Yeah, yeah, um, it's like North East. North East, like, yeah. I want to say Bedlington, but it's not, because that's no. where Dobie's from. It's yeah. just sad, but yeah. Um, the week before the match play, we're going to do one on a Saturday afternoon. And I am going to try and get there. I'm going to do everything I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah that we know your schedule is, yeah. is absolutely bonkers. mental. Before I let you go, what are you expecting for the rest of the year? Um, ooh. Um, I think the... I think the honeymoon period's over for Luke in terms of the players sort of, not molly coddling, but sort of going, oh, you know, he's only a kid, he'll be all right. They're like, oh my God, this is a serious threat. And he is a serious threat. That doesn't mean he or anyone else is going to dominate. Um, I think, I think we may see Dobie go close again to another tile. I think Gary might pinch one, as I've said. I think Littler would possibly get his hands on one. And there is so many events. The, the, and I'm not about pro tours, I'm sort of from Euro Tour up. World and, Series events, Euro Tour. Yeah, World TV, Series, and, Euro Tour. TV titles. I think we could see a season where they're just being dotted around and picked up. But I, I, I'm quite surprised. Dave Chisnell was playing lovely and he's just having a little bit of a dip in form. But I wouldn't be shocked to see him because he loves the, 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 the Euro Tours. I think Ryan Searles, a shoe in to do to do something. He's been in, he's been in great form and just just walked into one over the weekend. I'm I'm pretty sure he didn't expect to be on a backboard with, you know, he, his uh, resume. Uh, yeah, I just think we're gonna. I think we're gonna have a mixed bag year. I think we'll. I think with this schedule, I think you'll see peaks and troughs of, of players' form because that's naturally going to occur. Uh, whether that be through just fatigue or form, um, but yeah, I, and. Uh, uh, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see more announcements from from new sponsors and new partners in our sport. I think, uh, I, I think we may be going through a period where we're going to um, break more barriers down and maybe find out. I, I, I'm amazed that the, the BBC's interest in, and that the BBC are running a live ticker on this event. It's out there. You're like, who would have thought? You know, because effectively they're promoting an ITV event. An ITV event. Um, but yeah, I think, I think. Listen, we love our boxing. There's been some incredible collaborations, aren't there, between Eddie Irwin and, and and Frank Warren. Um, so you're expecting some Saudi money to drop in the dance? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me, mate. It wouldn't. Any anything now wouldn't surprise me in our sport. I thought, I thought I'd seen it all with 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 what Fallon did, but. Um, yeah, this is this is unexpected, but so pleasing. I'm so, I'm so pleased for all the players because they are getting so many opportunities. Uh, parents are now looking at their kids who've got an interest in sport that or, or darts that never thought it was a career path. Well, uh, you only got to look at the, the bank balance of Luke Littler to know it's a it's a genuine career path now, and it and, it, and in, in in some areas we're starting to get more respect, uh, you know, more respect of it being a sport. When you've got so many famous people talking about, you know, our sport and Luke Littler, it, it, it can do no harm. And um, yeah, it's in a good place. I just, uh, I just like to work a little bit less, but I can't stay away. Mate, absolute pleasure Thanks as always, well. mate.